What's up guys, we're back in the shop and I'm super excited for this one. We're building a crib, let's go. What better way to unlock a new stage in life than the milling process? After looking up the industry safety measurements and measuring a bunch of factory cribs, I came up with a design that I thought was gonna be simple and timeless. And even after going through all that trouble, I still got the same daily question from my wife. Is the crib going to be safe? To which I answered, Oh yeah, I'm building a crib. I thought it was supposed to be a baby death machine. I'm in danger! I guess I'm just lucky that she was there every day to keep me on track. After finishing the milling process, I started with what was going to be the box spring that was going to hold the mattress to the crib. I had a lot of reoccurring pieces on this build, so to play it safe, I taped and glued a lot of them together to make the cuts. After finishing the frame, it was time to throw in the slats of the box spring that would be the support of the mattress. After finishing the box spring and sending it up to 220, I started working on the four legs. I also started working on the two smaller sides of the crib. After getting those four sides done, it was time to start working on the rungs, and this was easily the dumbest part of the whole process. It took almost as long as sanding. I did a small round over on all the corners of the crib just to hopefully prevent future splinters. This part of the process was very challenging, but probably the most fun. I really got to test my woodworking skills and push my limits.
I went with this method to connect the four sides for a couple reasons. One, I thought it'd be very structurally sound. Two, I wanted the two sides that I glued up and the two sides that I screw together to look as similar as possible. If there was something better, please leave a comment. Now I'm routering out the two sides that won't be glued together. I made them a little bit wider just so after a couple coats of finish and clear coat, they'd still be able to slide in and out together and screw together just fine. I was really trying to make this a piece that I could take apart and put into storage after he grew out of it. Here you'll notice I labeled each side A, B, C, and D, and that's just because I didn't quite trust my drilling ability, and I wanted to make sure that down the road I'd still be able to get this thing back together. This was not part of my original plan, but I didn't like how the ingrain looked on the top of the four sides, so I decided just to cover it up. These aluminum L-beams serve a couple purposes. One, I thought they were going to be a little stronger than just wood. Two, I wanted this crib to be adjustable from toddler to infant, and so I thought this was going to be the easiest way to do that. If there's a better way, drop a comment. I also end up painting these black, that way you don't see them as well. I just don't show that in the footage. By this point I was about 98% done with the crib and my wife reminded me that I needed to make an arm to hold one of those dangly things. So this was not part of the original plan but I think it turned out alright.
after this point in time, I broke everything back down. And even though I'd pre-sanded up to 240, I went ahead and sanded everything back up to 320. We ended up deciding, and by we, I mean she ended up deciding on a tongue oil finish. And after the first coat, I sanded with 400 before applying the second. After letting the tongue oil dry a couple days, I sanded it down again with 400 and started applying a water-based polyurethane. I applied three coats of this, sanding with 600 between each one. And then after the final coat, I hit everything with a thousand grit before wiping it down. After two months of working on it when I had the time, I finally got it done, just two days before he arrived. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you think I earned it, please hit that like and subscribe button. Or if you just want to help me feed this new baby, hit that like, subscribe, and send it to a couple friends. We'll see you next time when I'm back in the shop.